Today we've got the Fairberry tank as I call it. So this is about a half scale, maybe a little bit smaller version of the M4 Sherman tank. Same, different model, sub-model than we have out in front of the museum. The one we have in front is an EZ-8, so a very late war model. Uh, this one, don't know who it was made by. It's a total mystery. Uh, never found out who it was made by, assuming it's a World War II armor bet due to the accuracy of the model itself. The, it's made all wood, so it, the gentleman took dimensional lumber and he'd stack it up as tall as he needed it, would peg it together so there's no mechanical fasteners whatsoever in the tank, and then he'd carve and shape it to whatever desired shape he wanted and fill in the cracks with uh, like wood putty, like a wood filler, uh, water putty, pretty commonly used. But everything's wood, so the all the hatches are individual pieces, all the hinges are individual pieces, the loops around the lights are all individual pieces, uh, all of the, even the track pads themselves are five individual pieces, and they're all individual track pads. So whoever made it took a lot of time, spent a lot of time making a very accurate, very well represented model of a Sherman. Uh, when we got it, I found it or was told about it out underneath a tarp at one of our training sites in Hastings, the Greenleaf training site. And when we moved here to the new museum in Seward in 2014, this followed us here. And we used it in some parades. We had a lighted Christmas parade that we put Santa up in the commander's cupola and put lights around it to make it look like the tank was moving. Towed it behind a Jeep for a parade, towed it behind a Jeep in the 4th of July parade and had a kid tossing out candy at the top. And then many years pass, as 2016 or so, Ron Burhoop, who was the facilities maintenance tech here in Seward and myself, one winter decided we were going to restore it. So we, we took it all apart as much as we could. Uh, we sanded everything down, repaired all the cracks, left two spots bare. So one spot here in the hall we left bare, and then another spot over on the turret on the opposite side we left bare. So people could see that it is in fact a wooden model of a tank. A lot of people always ask us if it's fiberglass or steel model or you know, something else, but it's, it's in fact, it's just wood and everything moves. I mean, the tracks move, the, the main gun, she moves up and down, the turret turns, the commander's cupola goes round, the commander's 50 cal moves and articulates just like it normally would. There's actually little wooden bullets he carved inside the ammo feed tray for the ammo can. And uh, ever since we restored it, it's just been up here on display, hoping that maybe someday somebody would be able to tell us who built it or where it came from. There's a couple rumors I heard. Uh, one of them was it came from Fairbury Crete area. It was built by some vets down there. When we did restore it, we saw on the side it had Fairbury Army National Guard uh, markings on the side. That's why we call it the Fairbury Tank. Uh, another group of guys said they used to use it all the time down in Beatrice for different Veterans Day parades and there's pictures of it in the parades down in Beatrice but nobody's been able to solve the mystery of who built the Fairbury Tank or why they built it or where they built it at. So if anyone's got any information it would be very appreciative if you could tell us who, when, or why this thing came about. We, have a rough idea where it came from, it just needs a little bit more concrete information. If anybody has any knowledge of this model, where it came from, just email or call myself or email or call the museum.